Welcome to Just Asia, HRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Indian activist found dead after filing RTI application. Pakistan Senate appoints first woman opposition leader. Burma's UN ambassador rejects draft resolution on human rights. Police in Nepal beats man for not paying bribe. Human rights and rule of law lecture organized for Indonesian high school students. Cambodia, UN representative rejects joint statement. Urgent appeal from Indonesia. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia. I'm Kavyanjali Shukla. This week, Just Asia begins with India, where a social activist, Poi Punham Majo, was killed in Clariath, East Jayantia Hills, Meghalaya. Majo's body was found near a bridge. According to the police, a wrench was found next to the body and preliminary inquiries suggest that the victim was hit on the head, leading to his death. The motive for his murder has not been ascertained yet. President of the Jaintia Youth Federation, Majo Majo had recently filed a right to information application seeking details about the alleged misappropriation of public funds in the Jaintia Hills Autonomous District Council. He also claimed that cement companies in Jaintia Hills were mining without permission from the council. Majo had earlier moved a public interest litigation before the Guwahati High Court against the cement companies. Also, a former senior officer of the district council was arrested on complaints filed by him for corruption. Majo's death spotlights the danger under which rights activists operate in India. In Pakistan, senior legislator Sherry Rahman from the opposition party of former President Asif Ali Zardari has become the country's first woman opposition leader in the upper house of parliament. Rahman, a former diplomat who served as Pakistan's ambassador to the United States from 2011 to 2013, has been a member of Senate since 2015. She is also a former journalist and prominent human rights activist in Pakistan. Rahman has closely worked with former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto killed in a bomb attack at an election rally in 2007. Bhutto was Pakistan's first woman Prime Minister. Rahman is among 20 women legislators in the 104-member Senate. Another woman elected to the Senate earlier this month was Krishna Kumari from the country's marginalized Hindu minority. Moving to Burma, the country has rejected a draft resolution on the situation of human rights in the country tabled by the European Union. The draft resolution was considered for the action last Friday. During the 37th regular session of the United Nations Human Rights Council, UNHRC in Geneva, Burma's permanent representative to the UN, U Hutnin Lin, rejected the resolution saying that some paragraphs of the draft are highly intrusive and directly challenge state sovereignty. In December last year, the Burmese representative also rejected another UN resolution with regard to the Rohingya crisis, but pledged efforts to address the challenges of Rakhine state. That resolution was tabled by member state of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC. Just Asia speaks to Ashraf Zaman, HRC's license officer, for details. If you look at the Human Rights Council session, the international community, particularly the member states of the Human Rights Council and the observer states, most of them are very much concerned about the situation of Myanmar, particularly the crackdown of Burmese military and the Buddhist extremist against the Rohingya Muslim communities of the North Rakhine state. Apart from that, there are uh, the Shan and Kachin state, the, uh, uh, the ethnic communities of those states are also facing a uh, problem in uh, Myanmar. So, but uh, apart from the Shan and Kachin state, uh, the Rohingya issue has been now globally prominent because of the uh, depth of the problem 
and the types of uh, violence that has been uh, it is a kind of extermination of the community uh, which uh, has been highly criticized by a number of high profile United Nations officials including the High Commissioner for Human Rights uh, has said it the uh, textbook example of ethnic cleansing. So, the, uh, the attention is there, uh, criticism is there, there is also recommendations and request for ending this problem is there and almost in every session there is certain resolutions or recommendations being adopted uh, at the Human Rights Council uh, regarding the situation of Myanmar, particularly the Rohingya Muslim communities. The repatriation of the Rohingya refugees from Bangladesh to Myanmar is a highly complicated process. It, first of all, it needs full preparedness and cooperation uh, with visible improvement from the uh, government of Myanmar to make sure that they are not going to orchestrate any further violence against this community and they are going to ensure all guaranteed rights to the Rohingya community in their own home with uh, human dignity and uh, all fundamental human rights uh, that they deserve. So, if that situation is created then the repatriation will uh, the, the process can begin. But unfortunately, on, on the part of the Myanmar government, uh, so far there is no visible and credible information uh, uh, available that they are going to repatriate these people with full honor and so that Rohingya refugees will also be encouraged to voluntarily make their choice of returning. Uh, uh, to Myanmar. There are a lot of things that needs to be done. At the first place, uh, uh, the international community need to make sure that Myanmar government respects the international norms and respects all these resolutions being adopted uh, by the UN Human Rights Council and also the General Assembly of the United Nations. A at the same time, the international community certain member states needs to play a very positive and active role to promote human rights instead of uh, being an ally of the Burmese military which is orchestrating this violence against the Rohingya uh, community. So, in one hand the international community has to come up with a very concrete and strong uh, plan of actions to make sure that uh, everybody is on board to promote and protect human rights and also prevent any kind of violence the state is going to orchestrate and at the same time prosecute the perpetrators who have committed this crime as fast as possible. So, if, if these two things go on uh, together then we can see the, uh, the, there will be peace and at the same time stability in the region. Next, in Nepal, a plain cloth police officer beat a local resident after he was unable to provide the bribe demanded by the officer. On March 15th, Santosh Shah was heading towards Molapur of Rotahat district with some 100 kilos of sweets on his motorcycle. Santosh was stopped by the officer Bal Kanahiya Thakur who began inquiring into Santosh's business and eventually demanded a bribe of NPR 500. When Santosh denied having 500 rupees and instead offered him some sweets, Officer Thakur became furious and started abusing him with foul language. He then took the keys from the motorcycle and used them to hit Santosh on his stomach and below his navel. Santosh fell down, but Officer Thakur kept hitting him. Santosh was hit on his right eye and kicked on his right shoulder. The assault lasted for around 15 minutes until Santosh lost consciousness. Locals then took Santosh to the district hospital. They also took Officer Thakur to the district police office. In Indonesia, a lecture on the rule of law and human rights was held for senior high school students in Jakarta, jointly organized 
by the Asian Human Rights Commission and the law faculty of the University of Bancarno, the lecture introduced basic legal and human rights concepts to the 80 attending students. References from various Asian countries were also shared with the students. According to the AHRC, it is crucial that students as future leaders are aware of their rights and of legal and democratic principles. Moreover, this knowledge can also prevent their involvement in criminal cases and other patterns of juvenile delinquency common in Indonesia. Not only were the students enthusiastic about the topic, but several students noted that rule of law and human rights must become the main indicator to elect Indonesia's new president and parliament members in the 2019 general elections. Many of the students were 17 and would be eligible to vote in 2019. For further information, Just Asia speaks to Mr. Chris Biantoro, local human rights activist. It is one day lecture and uh, semi-human rights training organized by the Law Faculty of University of Pungkarno along with the Indonesian desk of the ASEAN Human Rights Commission. We uh, approach vocational high school students as participants of the training because we do believe that it is very important to introduce rule of law and human rights even though it is a basic theory to the student as early as possible to strengthen their knowledge and to prepare them when they enter university and also to avoid young generation involved in criminal cases such as brawl and other cases of student fighting among the high schools Fighting among the students is common in Jakarta and some other big cities in, in Indonesia. Therefore, we organize this training and approach to high school students. We also explain to them basic theory of law, human rights, legal and human rights instrument, and also the relation between the state and its citizens. What is the state obligation and what is the citizen's rights before the law? We also introduce them when with some serious cases human rights violation cases and also national and international legal instrument. At the end, we also encourage them to express their opinion, their thought about law and human rights and also cases that they are facing in the daily life. We do hope that this practice will be very useful for them and also the, teacher, the teachers who participate in this training. We also distribute some books and tools to the participants for their further learning about law and human rights uh, instruments. Moving to Cambodia, the country's ambassador to the United Nations rejected a statement to the UN Human Rights Council endorsed by 45 nations last week, urging for improvements in the country's human rights situation ahead of a general election in July. The joint statement with signatories ranging from Albania to the United States expressed deep concern about the recent serious decline of civil and political rights in Cambodia. The statement said it shared the concerns of UN officials about government actions that will undermine the conduct of credible, free and fair elections in July. For the Cambodian government to retain its legitimacy, any elections must be free, fair and credible. The country's sole credible opposition party, the Cambodia National Rescue Party, was dissolved last November. All its members were tossed out of the parliament and party leaders have been subject to legal harassment. The government also intensified restrictions on civil society groups and independent media outlets, all but ensuring that Hun Sen will face no serious challenge at the polls. Finally, the Urgent Appeals Weekly features one case from Indonesia, a local farmer from Rokan Hilly Regency, Riau Province, together with his wife and child were victims of torture, ill-treatment and intimidation. Rajiman and other local peasants are being intimidated to hand over their land to businessman parliamentarian Asil Bangun without compensation. Although a police report has been filed, the case investigation has not yet shown any significant progress. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. 
For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia/justasia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.